Okay, Ash, do you want a fact about candy or trick or treating? Trick or treating. Okay. We already did a candy. <sighs> yeah, but this one was interesting, but it's fine. You'll never know. Um, did you know there is a city that banned anyone over 14 from trick or treating? Why? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, you I was rushed. One job. I was you had rushed, a one job, and I was trying to no find something interesting. No one was rushing you. I there thought was you were no going to say candy. There was so literally was no one rushing you. One. Fine, give me the know. candy fact. It says, "I'm <sighs> over." <laughs> this is our special bonus episode, and I failed. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics products are made with clean, high-performance, skin-loving ingredients. Their clinically proven formulas not only highlight your best features, they actually improve your skin over time. I love Thrive Cosmetics products because they're formulated without parabens, sulfates, or phthalates. And one of the best parts is Thrive Cosmetics never tests on animals. They're Leaping Bunny and PETA certified as 100% vegan and cruelty-free. We love everything about Thrive Cosmetics and their products are amazing and their bigger than beauty mission is truly inspiring. And that is every product purchase, they commit to support nonprofit partners with a donation of funds or products and it is truly inspiring. You're going to love them as much as we do. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash advice for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here. That's thrive, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash advice for 15% off your first order. Thrivecosmetics.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by First Leaf. First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. And since they work with renowned winemakers all over the world, there's virtually no limit to the variety of wines you get to try. Not only does First Leaf introduce you to a ton of new wine, each box gets better. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns more about your palate, which I love. They get to know you. And the reason I love First Leaf the most is because they are so confident that you'll love the wine, they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you receive a bottle that isn't exactly what you were hoping for, First Leaf will credit your account back. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash advice. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Try T R Y first leaf F I R S T L E A F dot com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Simply Safe has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view so you can keep watch over your entire yard. It has 1080p HD resolution with an eight time zoom. That means that you can zoom in and clearly see things like faces and license plates to capture critical evidence. It has a built-in spotlight with color night vision so you can keep an eye on what's going on day or night. And it's super simple to set up and usually takes just minutes. It has an easy to remove rechargeable battery so it doesn't need an outlet and can go anywhere on your property. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash advice. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash advice. My God. That was a Hey everybody. Oh, Hi. Welcome to our show. Welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. Every year Every around this time. Year. We give you one extra episode. One extra. And it's for our October series, series. for a special, a special Halloween, Halloween episode, episode where we, we just, just give you, you- <laughs> Another scary story, story to, to listen to. You can't. What? <laughs> you set me up for failure. I'm so sorry. So, welcome to Taryn's not prepared for Taryn's anything. not prepared. I told you we did not have to have a fun fact. I wanted it. The people want it. I'm not saying that it 
<laughs> I love, I feel like the last like three episodes have started with us fighting about fun facts. <laughs> we have to ban it just because it's causing too much tension. Yes, if you guys don't know, which I'm, I know a lot of you do because you guys came after me. Taryn loves starting the episodes with fun facts. I, I, I suggested that we, you know, don't. <laughs> And you guys strongly suggested. You guys, I was, you know, I thought you might show People up at came my house. At you. Yeah, I was People a little came scared. At you, um, but but honestly, for the candy one, out of Valentine's Day, Halloween, and Christmas, rank where you think candy sales are, like top highest. Yeah, if it's interesting, because you said it's interesting. It's just a fact. Halloween's not top. Okay, detective. Easter. Ashley. What? <laughs> is said, Easter not an option? Oh, <laughs> I said. <laughs> oh, no. I'm crying, dude. Oh, no. I said Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Christmas, and Halloween. And you oh, said Easter. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got it's me. It's my defense. <sighs> Normally, I've had a lot more caffeine by now. <laughs> let's talk about it I'm still asleep <laughs> okay let's try again <clears throat> Christmas Valentine's Day Halloween Valentine's Day is top yes no it's last <gasps> Christmas Christmas is top really yeah I would have never I don't know why I don't I would buy have candy never. on Christmas do no. you no I mean I guess candy can't no but no. I don't even yeah I don't. I don't buy I candy shocked. at all on Christmas. I only buy candy on Halloween. I do buy candy on Valentine's Day for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Have I sent myself chocolates before? Yes. Yes. Have I made someone believe they were not sent by me? Yes. One of my favorite things about Taryn is I remember there was. I mean, there were many <laughs> Valentines where we were both single. <laughs> And uh, there Better was a question. Has there been one where <laughs> I haven't been single? She showed up to my house with chocolate on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And that was that was sweet. Also, one of our very first hangouts as uh, friends yeah. was on Valentine's yeah. Day. Um, me you and my sister. Yeah. We had like a Valentine's no, Day, I, like a girl's date. I am obsessed with Valentine's Day and people think that's so weird. But I love like I love love. Yeah. Just because I don't have any <laughs> doesn't mean I can't love just it. Just because I'm single and alone. Mm hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to our Halloween episode. Special edition. Special edition. Um, we're just going to get straight Sometimes into I forget stories. we're recording a podcast. I know, I do too. And I'll just I get just distracted and I'm just talking to you, which just oh, happened. Wait, speaking of Halloween, should we talk about what Lux just sent us? <gasps> yes. Okay, guys. This is the coolest. And I'm the not cutest. joking. This is like probably one of the coolest things I can say in my life and I know that sounds like a big statement but I genuinely mean it with my whole heart um Lexi came in and was like I have to show you guys something yes she shows us a picture of ourselves I'm sure we'll post that it on we socials took, hopefully we're we asking this permission past summer, I think we took like right outside the studio mm-hmm. and she shows us a picture of ourselves then she swipes and it took me a second because me, I was like what am I looking at right now? Uh Because it was the same picture with different people. And then she tells us that two girls dressed up as us for For Halloween. Halloween. I'm not joking. I was like, it's happening. Guys, this is going straight to my head. We've made it. famous. We've made it. I'm famous. Um, So shout out to Addison underscore Claire and her friend for being Taryn and I for Halloween. Yeah, you guys have to go look at this picture because it's so, they nailed it. it. Like they nailed it. It is spot on. Like the jeans, the tops, the hair, like you the guys pose. did a great job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys killed it. You made my life. Adorable. Yes. Thanks Y'all guys. Y'all are adorable. Thanks guys. Um, anyways, let's get into our stories. We didn't talk. You have a tear it up. I have a tear it okay, up. Okay. Yes. Okay. This one is titled a Halloween tear it up music madness. Ooh. Hi, Ashley and Taryn. My name is Audrey, and it's so nice to kind of meet you. In light of all the scary stories you've been sharing recently, I thought I'd share one that is not as scary, kind of embarrassing, and has a nice ending. On a side note, I really love your podcast, even though they scare me half to death every single time. And I honestly can't believe they actually happen to real people. 
Right? Anyways, here's my story. Last year during 2020, I started my first year of college from home, which was kind of a bummer, but not too bad. It's also important to note that I have an older brother who is one year older than me, and he also had to complete his second year of school at home. To motivate each other to work hard, we decided to study and do our classes together in our guest room turned school room. One day, I distinctly remember I was doing my calc homework while having my AirPods in, and I thought I heard music in the distance. I shrugged it off because I thought it was nothing, and probably my head was making up weird things because I was not enjoying doing my homework. Mine did that all the time. <laughs> Anything to avoid. Yeah. (laughs) I kept hearing it for a couple minutes, so I took out my AirPods to use my detective skills to the fullest. I guess my brother heard it, too, because we both looked up at each other and realized the music was coming from somewhere else. And it was not any ordinary music, but rather the kind of creepy doll music that you hear in horror movies. Absolutely not. No. No. With my pencil still in hand, you know, in case I needed to find anyone, (laughs) we decided to investigate where it was coming from. The weird thing was we couldn't pinpoint where the music was coming from because it sounded like it was coming from everywhere. So we slowly tiptoed towards our backyard to check, then upstairs, then peeked in our front door. Still no luck. By now, I was getting a little panicked and my older brother, who's an athlete and 6'2", was no help because he's horrible with anything scary slash horror related. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we went back into the guest room and peeked out our side window, and then we saw it. In all her glory, she was big, blasting the music from a megaphone, and she had wheels. She was a boba truck. <laughs> boba? <laughs> <laughs> we looked at each other and started laughing because we literally thought a boba truck was a killer playing creepy music. Thanks so much for reading my story. I hope you got a kick out of it. If you do end up reading my story on the podcast, I am definitely forcing my brother to hear it and then making fun of him. I think you all are great and have amazing personalities. Have a great rest of your day. Sincerely, Audrey. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Those boba trucks, man. They get you. That's, I've always thought, like, ice cream trucks, like, the, they always play the old school children's, like, nursery rhyme songs. Yeah. And it's, like, they're always, like, the speaker's kind of off, so it's, like, there's, like, static, or it's, like, goes, like, off key. Gets louder, gets quieter. Terrifying. Yeah, and then I no wonder everyone thinks they're like murderers because they just come rolling down the street slowly playing that music. Like, terrifying. Yeah. Never heard of a boba truck though. That's I know. cool. Hol- I mean, it's Halloween's almost here for us. We're recording Literally. this. We're recording this um, the Monday before Halloween. So yeah, it's, it's co- we should watch like scary movies every night. Um, not that super scary. Fun for who? Not super scary. Just kind of scary. Okay. Guys, I got Taryn <laughs> to watch the original Poltergeist for the first yeah. time. We watched it together. Sabotaged. Um. Yeah, we went to an I event. I did pretty well. We went to an event, and I I fully was on a different page. I thought we were watching a different movie. Um, and then we get there, and it said Poltergeist, and we were both like, oh, no, this might be too much for us. But it was the 80s version. What yeah. were your thoughts? I, I mean, honestly, it was kind of like, it felt like I was watching like Haunted Mansion. Like, yeah. the ghosts were like, not that scary. So I was okay. There was just a couple times where I like... It's the jumpiness that freaks me out. So it's like he's looking for the doll and he's like, and he goes to look under his bed and I'm like, of course it's going to pop out. So it was like that kind of stuff that was scary. And also I was just like nervous because I knew we were watching a scary movie, but I did good. Yeah. What's funny is like the jumpiness doesn't, it's yeah, it makes me jump, but it doesn't scare me. See, that's the the stuff that gets me. Any like, like spiritual storyline that'll follow me. But the jump is like a quick Oh, More I of an adrenaline rush for me. I hate that feeling. So I feel like the older I get, the more I'm realizing like what to look for in the products I use, especially on my face. Uh-huh. For example, Thrive Cosmetics, who we're working with today, they have high performance, clean, skin loving ingredients without all of the things that are bad for you, like parabens, sulfates, phthalates, all of those things that are, you know no-nos and um i'll just throw out should i just throw out my favorite 
So I personally am a big fan of the Brilliant Eye Brightener. It's a cream to powder highlighter eyeshadow stick that brightens and opens your eyes so it like tricks everyone's thinking, wow, she just had a great night's sleep, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm personally obsessed with their Define Gravity Eye Lifting Cream. I've, I have the worst, the worst <laughs> under eyes known to earth. I just constantly look tired. People are constantly like, oh, are you feeling okay? And I'm like, I'm, good, I'm fine. I'm fine. This Holy Grail eye cream instantly lifts, tightens, and brightens the look of your skin around your eyes while giving you line smoothing hydration, which we love. And honestly, it's like beauty sleep in a bottle, which I need these days. This is 30. Guys, I'm going to spit some Thrive Cosmetics facts out to you. All Thrive Cosmetics products are formulated without parabens, sulfates, or phthalates. And also, guys, I love Thrive Cosmetics because they never test on animals. They're a leaping bunny and PETA certified as 100% vegan and cruelty-free, and we love that. You're going to love them as much as we do. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash advice for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here. That's thrive, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash advice for 15% off your first order. Thrivecosmetics.com slash advice. As you all know, my co-host over here, Ashley, is what we call a wino. A wine connoisseur is wine what I prefer. Connoisseur. <laughs> um, and one thing, like I, every time I go with her to buy wine, I always am blown away by there are so many different oh, kinds. It's overwhelming. So like it's I wouldn't even know where to start because even if say you like a Chardonnay, like there's five thousand of them. Yeah. Like how do you know? So I am so pumped because we are working with First Leaf and it's a wine club membership. My people. And like they do it for you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's all I'm looking for. Life. Just do everything for me. <laughs> Guys, if you don't already know, First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. And since they work with renowned winemakers all over the world, there is virtually no limit to the variety of wines that you get to try. Not only does First Leaf introduce you to a ton of new wine, each box gets better. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns more about your palate. So the cool thing for me is when it comes to buying wine, I'm always like, I don't want to spend money on a wine that I might possibly not like. Yeah. Right? The benefit about First Leaf is they want to get to know you. So you actually get to rate and review each wine that you try, which just sounds like a party to right. me. <laughs> that's, your, that's your typical Friday night. <laughs> yeah. You can be like, hey, loved the first one. loved the notes in this. Like, didn't care for the fifth one. Like, this one had a flavor that I didn't care. And you can explain that to them. And my favorite part about First Leaf is that they are so confident you'll love their wine they have a 100 percent satisfaction guarantee which is ballsy so yep. they must stand by their wine if you receive a bottle that isn't exactly what you were hoping for first leaf will actually credit your account back which can i get an amen amen join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for 29.95 and free shipping just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash advice that's six bottles of wine for 29.95 and free shipping Try T R Y first leaf F I R S T L E A F dot com slash advice. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> so let's get on to um you know more Story scariness. Time. More scariness. Okay. I don't even know what this one is called. Oh, Valentine's Day is for the creeps. Hi, Taryn and Ashley. Hey. How are you two doing this spooky season? Splendid. Great. Okay. Pretty great. My, <laughs> my name is Lauren. Yes, you can say my name. And I have an eerie tale that I can now retell without being completely terrified about my experience. Honestly, I don't know how she can not be scared every day of her life. Oh, my God. Okay. This one got me. Got me. Because of what I'm about to tell you, I have been extremely, oh, I have become extremely cautious in public in general. I don't blame you. And guys, this is not a, uh, what's it called? A, like a ghost. Oh. Haunted nothing. Oh, we're this switching is, it up. This is a real time, which this to me is so much more scary because yes. it's like, you know? Yeah. Statistically, okay. like <clears throat> seeing a, a ghost or spiritual anything is like probably not going to happen to yeah. you real life stuff like this yeah that's scary so scary okay 
I've written this a few times to get every little detail in. I've listened to you two ask for more details with a lot of the October series episodes. And can I just say, same. (laughs) Glad you appreciate it. All those stories left me hungry for more, and I'm going to serve you up the whole enchilada with my story. Uh, I really hope you read mine on the podcast, but if not, I will so be listening for all the other October series episodes and then re-listening to them because they are just that good. You get us. Uh, You get us. I just want to take you out to coffee. I feel like we'd all get along. Yeah. It was funny. I sang at my church yesterday, Mm -hmm. and we were like all hanging out with the worship team, and... Um, one of the girls was talking to me about the podcast and then some of the guys I was able to be like oh but right now we're doing scary stories you guys should listen and it was like funny because they were like oh cool versus where yeah. like usually I'm like we talk about <laughs> life, life situation. situations you're like okay <laughs> do you talk about sports no we could though <laughs> when I started dating a pro athlete manifest manifest okay alright um, here we go are you ready? Get ready. Gosh. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Get ready. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. My absolutely terrifying tale takes place five years ago on not your typical spooky day. It was Valentine's Day. It was midday in a smaller town in Michigan where I am from and was working at a tea shop at the time. A lot of spooky things happen in the middle of nowhere, but this is not that. This small town is surrounded by other cities that are five to ten minutes away from here. To give you an idea of what this area is like, there are three targets in the cities right by me, but not in my city. It has a lovely downtown area by day and a lively bar scene at night. Ironically, for the events that occurred that day, it happened to be a bright, sunny, and snowy Valentine's Day. The icy streets were filled with shoppers running their Sunday errands and buying their last-minute Valentine's Day gifts. Icicles were scattered across the streets, but I was all cozy at work with my warm cup of tea. I got to work around 10 a.m., and since it was a Sunday, a.k.a. a slow work day for me, I was planning on closing five hours later. I usually preferred to work alone at this shift before this day because that meant I could sit, read a book, and or be on my phone where there wasn't any work to be done or customers in the store without the little old ladies I used to work with having something to say about it or my boss hanging over watching me. (laughs) My boss was out of town anyways, all the way in Florida for a vacation with her husband, who was the co-owner. So I was very much all alone. No one to check up on me, not even a security camera to look into the shop, which is a very important detail for my story. Customers per, per, <laughs> per, hold on. Customers per. Per, periodically, <laughs> per. Customers periodically rolled in buying last minute gifts like decorative teapots for their Valentine or just buying their normal weekly supply of tea. I was helping an elderly lady with a teapot on a top shelf. Doesn't help that I'm 5'1", but oh well. <laughs> when a tall man walked into the shop. No, he was not the tall, dark, handsome, and my age type of man. He was a tall, balding brunette looking to be about three times my age. I was 20 at the time. Wearing a suit with no tie and was wearing a white collared shirt with half of the buttons undone exposing his chest hair and a long gold chain with a medallion at the end. (sighs) That's a hard pass for me. (laughs) Like, that's just... I feel like he knows. He knows the presence that he's giving off. It's like the chest hair or the chin. You can't. It's like both send a that message. That can't be comfortable. Nah. It's That's got to be it's pull at your chest all hair. caught yeah. in there. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I would assume. Thankfully, I don't have that. <laughs> but, yeah, I can't be comfortable. Okay. He seemed pretty cheerful when he walked in, but this was not the type of temperament he was going to keep. I finished selling the kind elderly woman her teapot and she left the store. That left me and the man alone in the store. I asked the man if he needed any help. He asked me to go over to the one wall in the store where there were shelves of jars and tea leaf samples to sniff, kind of like perfume samples at Ulta. The actual tea a person bought was behind the counters, not for sniffing. Chances are if you like the smell, you'll like the taste. I went over to help while he asked me what my preference was on some of the teas, and just as I was explaining my thoughts, I felt pressure 
in a place that I should not be, my butt. I jumped back away from this creep, so he was pushing himself against mm-hmm. her. I was stunned, in shock really. I was taken off guard. It was just him and I in the store. In my shock state, I had no clue what to do. My mind went blank as I stopped talking and he started flirting. Well, flirting isn't actually the most accurate word here. Mm -hmm. It was more expressing his creepy observations of me. Yeah. He specifically said, hmm, that's a very cute shirt, very low cut, while obviously staring at my chest. Disgusted and still in shock, I told him I had a boyfriend and wasn't interested to keep him at bay. That's what's so frustrating to me is I remember when that was enough. Yeah. Like, when we were younger, like, you would be like, I have a boyfriend. And people would be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's like, you so? could say you're married. You could say I'm not interested. and Or, like, the thing right now is like, oh, I have a boyfriend. And they're like, well, I don't when's, see the, a ring when's on the wedding the day? Yeah. yeah. But, doesn't like, mean anything. it doesn't matter what you say. Like, you you shouldn't need to explain anything. Just saying. No should mean no. No, I'm not interested should be enough. But it's not. And yeah. I, I hate that. I hate that. Okay, looking back at this day, I should have told him to get out, but that might have angered him even more than he already got, and I had no way of defending myself. I practically sprinted back behind the counter to get away from him. Not giving up without a fight, he ran over just as fast as I did with a bunch of stuff stuff he intended to buy. I sold it to him to get him out of my store and my life, more importantly. I didn't know what to do all alone and pretty much defenseless besides be as nice as possible and get him out and on his way. Yeah. I wish that's that's a hard line to know how rude or how how polite to be. And that's what sucks because it's you don't know their temperament. Like they could either respond well or poorly to either. And you you don't. Yeah. you You literally don't know. No. I wish I could drop. I wish I could have drop kicked him out of there. He exclaimed, there's no way you have a boyfriend and working on Valentine's Day. I retorted with, of course I do. He's at the gym and I don't get to control when I work most days. She says, there was no boyfriend at the time, FYI. Girl. Queen. My imaginary boyfriend has come in clutch. (laughs) Okay. Um, So he continues, you should go out with me instead. I say, no, I have a boyfriend. The creep glared at me and started leaning more and more over the counter. Mm. Very slowly and quietly, he hissed, you will come out with me one way or another, mm-hmm. whether you want to or not. Nope. My heart dropped in my stomach. Did I hear him right? Did he just threaten to kidnap me? I was starting to look over at him when he slowly, while I was paying more attention to the register and not him, put his gross, disgusting hand on my chest. No. I was really freaked out at this point. It's not like I was at a club where a bouncer could have been right there to kick this loser out or I had a buff coworker to escort him out or even that gym obsessed boyfriend I described. Sure, I work out most days of the week, but I couldn't do anything about this large, terrifying man grasping my chest and planning to take me with him besides just jump back. I was so shocked I couldn't even scream. I was more than thankful for what happened next. A customer, but also a witness, entered just as I tugged away from his ah, grasp. Thank God. He didn't try to get me and just stormed out. Unfortunately for me, she saw and heard nothing. She was an elderly, elderly lady, so she was very slow walking into the store, let alone noticing anything. Yeah. However, she stopped this creep from doing anything further. I continued to work. The sweet older lady smiled as she walked into the store. Before I went to help the woman who walked in, I decided it was best to text my family and friends first in case the creep came back. I texted my two best friends and my mom and dad. My best friend told me to have my pepper spray at the ready next time and that it was okay to spray him if I felt threatened. I just never knew when I when it'd be the appropriate time to say I feel threatened and take action upon it. Yeah. After listening about Taryn on her hikes with pepper spray, I know it's whenever I deem acceptable. Yeah, yeah. I would have sprayed yeah. him the second he like went to touch me. Oh, the when he first pressed himself against you. Yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Done. No, like you're done, you're yeah. out. And especially if he was like, I'm not leaving, then it's yeah. like, yeah. 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 Um <clears throat> 
I helped the lady and after several more customers, I noticed it was just about two and a half hours before I would close and go home for the day. Looking around the store, I saw another customer who was reading descriptions of the tea underneath the sample bottles. She asked me for help and I went from behind the counter over to her. She decided on what tea to purchase. Just as I was turning to go back to my spot behind the counter, I noticed the creep across the street watching me. Ugh. When he caught my Ugh. eye, he smirked. That's some Michael Myers. <sighs> Dude, uh-uh. I can't. I flew and tucked myself behind some stands where he couldn't see me and I wouldn't feel exposed. I texted everyone alerting them again. When I looked back, he was gone. I went behind the counter to help the lady, who now probably thought I was crazy for hiding behind the stand, pay for her tea. She left the store just as the creep came in with a box of chocolate-covered strawberries from the store across the street. He handed them to me, running out of the store, but not before telling me, hope you enjoy these before I take you with me. Ew. I hate this The so balls much. on this guy. I know. I know. It's wild. I know. Another customer walked into the store and she only saw the strawberry and asked me, wow, that's so sweet. Is he your boyfriend? I replied with a no. He's been harassing me all day. Did you hear what he just said to me? After all that he did, I didn't consider this nice at all. She looked shocked as she replied with, oh, no, I didn't. I just saw the gift. This creep was too careful about how he interacted with me. He knew to be careful of witnesses and getting caught in general. Because he's done it before. Uh, Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. This is like classic stalker behavior. The second that lady took off and the store was empty apart from me, the store's phone began to ring. Mm -hmm. I walked towards the phone but stopped myself from answering because I knew that number. Normally I would just pick it up but I had this gut feeling that I shouldn't. I ran over to where I knew I had seen this number before, and it was on our loyalty card section. We had a stack of loyalty cards we kept in the shop that customers can dig out theirs from a wooden index card box when they came into the shop. I went to the pile from today's sales, and there was this creeps sitting right on top with the same phone number as the one flashing on the caller ID. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick up but that didn't stop him. He called again and again until finally he left a message which was automatically played on speaker as he was recording it. He said, I see you. I see you through the windows. I looked out the front. He says, no, not the front. He seemed to know. Then he says, out the back door. There he was standing across from the back, all glass door watching me answer the and then he says effing phone now i flipped it and picked it up and put it back down i ran to the back door before he could and locked it with very shaky hands it took me a minute because the door had to be pulled in just so i could lock it i sprinted faster than i ever have gone before to the front door and locked it Running behind the counter, I grabbed my keys, phone, and pepper spray and went to the back room where there weren't any windows except for a small one up top that you couldn't see in. I hid underneath it, hoping even if he got there, he couldn't see me. While all of this was going on, the phone kept ringing. I checked the landline in the back and it was the same number. I picked up my own phone and called my parents. Thankfully, this isn't a situation where they didn't answer and I was stuck all alone. After several rings, my mom picked up. In a shaky voice, I told her what was happening with tears rolling down my cheeks. My mom said they'd be right there. I called my boss in Florida who quickly told me I should have called the cops first and that I needed to hang up and call them now. She was very concerned and called me back later to make sure I was okay. I called the police and they were on their way. In the meanwhile, he kept calling. He left another message saying he saw my nice car out back while describing my sister's gray Jeep Liberty. She let me borrow for the day while mine was at the shop. He left another voicemail saying he'd keep his promise from earlier without specifically describing the promise. Just as he left that message and after what must have been his 20th call, the police arrived. Four cars out front and three parked out back. I started to feel very safe and secure. My parents and little brother were not far behind as they had to find parking space in the downtown area. After showing everyone the voicemails and explaining what had happened, 
the police gave the creep a call. Unfortunately for me, because there weren't any security cameras that actually Ugh. caught his promise to me of having to go out with him one way or another, mm -hmm. nor were there any witnesses inside at the time, so I had nothing beside my word to tell them. I couldn't get a restraining order, and he was out of the shop, so it's not like they could kick him out of the shop. Right. They were able to call him back and tell him he was not welcome at the shop again, and if he ever came back, then I could get a restraining order against him. Thankfully for me, he never did. I worked there until next December without ever seeing him again. Ugh, as that you know of. Yeah, I mean. I know. I mean. I just hope he's not watching me today. Thanks for reading my story. I hope it wasn't too creepy. Have a Oof. great Halloween. Oh, that's so unsettling. I hate it so much. It's almost worse because there's, it's like not, nothing horrible quote unquote happened but that like allowed him to continue his life yes. so like Taryn said like he could be watching and you don't know because nothing happened there was no resolution yes. you know so it's it's very terrifying that he could just you know just be like around the corner just watching or yes. still invested in your life in some way and that's why like people who've had had stalkers like struggle for the rest of their life because yeah. like ev you just never know and these people are just free out there mm -hmm. and that's what like demented people do like mm -hmm. they love that mind game that they can play on people yeah i just listened to a crime a true crime episode on a podcast and it was the same like the killer would call the family over and over no. because like just mess they love seeing like fear mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff like that's it's a power terrifying. Trip. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it too. I hate it. I'm so sorry you experienced that. The freaking him being like, no, not the front. When yeah. she was looking oh. at the front. I was like, oh my oh. God. Not the back. I'm done. I'm done. He's in the back. Oh, that's terrifying. That's so scary. So scary. Well, Oof, thank you so uh, much, Lauren, for writing in. I'm so glad you're okay and you have some peace from all of this craziness. And I hope that, you know, he got what's coming to him. Oh, I hope so, too. He's probably in jail because he probably did this again. I mean, Lord willing. <laughs> Let's all, dear God, hope this guy can be in jail. Thank you. Yeah. We're manifesting an athlete for Taryn and for this yes. man to be in, in jail. In jail. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the, the message to be taken away today. <laughs> yes. Love it. Love it. Manifestation. That's hilarious. Wow. <sighs> Wasn't that so, like, I felt yeah. like I was there. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Ugh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Guys, there is big news from our favorite home security system. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right, Simply Safe, the system that US News and World Report names best home security system of 2021, just got even better. Guys, this camera has it all and it integrates with your Simply Safe home security system, extending its protection to the outside. Together, it means every door, window, and room are protected and now your entire property will be too. It has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view. So that means that you can keep watch over your entire yard. It has 1080p HD resolution with an eight time zoom, which means that you can zoom in and see things that are important like faces and license plates and capture critical evidence when you need to. And the reason I love Simply Safe is because it's always easy to use. It has an easy to remove rechargeable battery, so it doesn't need an outlet and can go anywhere on your property. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash advice. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash advice. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get into my story. This one is titled, Expect the Unexpected. No, no. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, let's dive in. This is a long one, so okay. get settled. Okay. And let's dive into it. Hi, Ashley and Taryn. Hello. Nothing gets me through the work day the way UA podcast can. Ah. I love you both, and I am so thankful for the funny, relatable, and encouraging content you create every week. 
She's like, okay, <laughs> enough. <laughs> this, We're done. <laughs> this series, on the other hand, dot, dot, dot. I listened to last week's episode at 7 a.m. and I was still scared by the end of the day. No. You make it less terrifying, though, with your humor and wheezing. <laughs> Dude, I... I feel like my wheeze is like a newer thing. I don't remember Does ever that wheezing. come with age? Because that's never been a thing. And then I feel like I, I became you know friends with you. Is? And then all of a sudden, like, because I make you laugh laughs, harder. Our laughs merged. And I we... make you laugh harder than anyone. That's <laughs> you do. But also, it's be it's like the silent laughs where your laugh isn't coming out. Also, when do we ever laugh with a freaking microphone in our mouth? I know. That's probably in why we hear mouth? it more. Yeah. 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 You know. Anyways, I never thought I would be writing in a story, but I also never thought that this story would happen to me. Expect the unexpected, I guess. But I will start with this. It is always the person in plain sight. Wait, is this another like... I don't know, Taryn. I don't know, Taryn. It was August 7th, 2020, just when I thought this year couldn't get any worse. At 7.49 a.m. when I walked up to my car to head for work. I parked my car under my apartment in an open carport. My apartment building is only seven units and sits on a very popular and chaotic street. When I rounded the corner to unlock my car, I saw, quote, stuff resting on my windshield. It was a pile of Beanie Babies. Since I live... For any like young people listening, I should loved. we do you want to explain the Beanie Baby? Yeah, Beanie Babies was this huge freaking trend Phenomenal. where it literally was exactly what it sounds like. Like tiny animals filled with beans. <laughs> and like people collected. I was them. gonna say they were collectibles. McDonald's, it was like mini beanie babies were like the toys. Yeah. It oh, was like it was a, a movement thing. and I had a ton I had of them. So many like bags full. I even yeah. had this like um, it was like a holder for Beanie Babies that displayed them all. Yeah. And um, it had my name on it and it was pink and purple. And you like looped the animals through this like rubber band and it like held them. So it yeah. was like if you could get the whole tower full, that would oh, yeah. be the goal. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Was the th- it was like the flex back then. Yeah. And they had it was only a collectible if it had the T.Y. The heart T-Y tag. tag. Yeah. 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 It was a thing. It was a thing. Anyways. Since I live for a funny moment, I actually started filming this in hopes of creating a, quote, funny Instagram story. I quickly stopped recording when I found a note and cash under the pile of a kangaroo, moose, red bear, and platypus beanie baby. I looked around. Did this happen recently? Did she say how long? 2020. Oh, so that's like, like, where do you even buy beanie babies? I mean, I don't. You, uh, you, uh, you've either had them for a long time yeah, or weird. you thrifted them. Okay. I looked around to see if anyone was pranking me. I opened the note and out fell $200 cash and four paragraphs of writing. I'll spare you the details, but here is an excerpt. I love you, but we don't communicate. You rather believe Dan who did nothing with his life, but brainwash you and use you as a sex slave. Here are Beanie Babies for the kids of the tragedy. Pouch Kangaroo has been listed on Etsy for $7,000. Sweet. (laughs) I threw away the Beanie Babies since the dumpster was to my right and I jumped in my car. She threw away the $7,000 Beanie (laughs) Baby? (laughs) Evidently. Like, he already scared you. Might as well profit from it. Let's get the money, honey. That's funny. This is me. Like, that would be me. I'd be like, take it. (laughs) Um, Jumped in my car, started to drive to work, and frantically called my roommate. She was panicked. Told me on the phone to not touch the cash, but it was too late. She was worried it was laced with drugs, but it honestly (laughs) felt like I was on drugs because nothing about this made any sense to me. Three days later, I went out to my car, and there were a dozen red roses all lined on my windshield. Another three days later, there was a bundle of white and yellow roses with a second note with a cell phone number. It said, quote, we all need to sit down and talk so the truth can be revealed. Okay, wrong car, bro. (laughs) Does someone think I'm in trouble or have me confused for someone else? What if they're trying to kidnap me? 
These were all the thoughts racing through my head. I started to tell all my friends, and one friend in particular took matters into his own hands. Without me knowing, my friend called the number on the second note and asked who it was. After getting his name and doing some serious FBI-level Google searching, my friend called me to share what he had figured out. Once I saw a picture, I was alarmed because I knew who it was. It was a man who would sit at the bus stop across my apartment every single night oh with God. his yellow bike. He would sit there for hours and just stare at my window. I felt relief knowing who it was, but we still didn't know why. The gifts, offerings kept on coming. It got to a point where I would expect something on my car every single morning. He placed a scary red-headed troll under my windshield wiper, then more roses, more cash, more letters that did not make sense, a turkey beanie baby, a famous purple bear princess beanie baby, but here's my favorite. My roommate watched him one night place roses, a rhino, flamingo, an ostrich beanie baby on my car, but he switched things up and placed two white claws on my car. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my Is she throwing all these away? I'm upset at her. I'm, I'm assuming so. Definitely the white claws. Start an eBay Don't store. drink that. Don't drink that. It's poison for sure. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. It has to end. It was getting to be too much and he was practically living outside of my apartment, just staring at my window from across the street until 2 a.m. It was time to confront him. One day my roommate and I were headed out to Costco and he was sitting across the street. I told my roommate to hit record and film as we walked up to him. I suddenly felt untouchable, I guess. I asked him if he was the person putting stuff on my car. He couldn't look me in the eye. He said no, to which I said, well, I saw you put those white claws on my car the other night. He replied, oh, that's right. I noticed someone had left things on your car and I wanted to help and remove it for you. But then I realized you might want it, so it was actually me putting it back on your car. Okay. <laughs> okay. I literally looked at him, laughed, and walked away. It was time for a restraining order, which was a total pain to get. So many hoops to jump through, paperwork, and lots of determination. After going to virtual court, he denied everything, but the judge approved the restraining order since I had all the evidence and the police confirmed that he had a history of stalking previous girls. The restraining order expires November 1st. Hopefully on November 2nd, there are no Beanie Babies on my windshield. And if you are wondering what I did with all the cash, <laughs> I bought a new outdoor Ikea couch for our balcony. <laughs> <laughs> my roommate and I will sit outside on it, drink wine, and still laugh about the month filled with Beanie Babies. The end. Ew. Both of us came with a stalker what story. What the heck? Isn't that wild? But, like, she didn't ask him and say, like, who's Dan? Like, you have the wrong person? Like, mm -mm. I don't understand. Like, what about all that story? Like, the whole context that he came to the car with about, like, her, the kids. Whose kids? Like, Are they is okay? he nuts? Or is he like, oh, I had the wrong car? Like, but he stares at her. What? I'm so, I have so or many Or was questions. that, like, an in for him to be like, oh, if he was confronted to say, oh, I, I clearly got the wrong person? I don't know. That's strange. Who's kids? I still think she should have sold the Beanie Babies, though. A thousand percent, yeah. If someone put something on my car and said it's worth seven thousand dollars, you best believe I'd be looking at it. I up. would. I would. I would at least Google it. Yeah. You know, pawn shop it. Take it inside my house in case there was a camera in it. But like, you know, or yeah, you don't know how dirty they are, but definitely wow. try to sell uh, them. That's weird. November first. That's coming up. It's around the corner. I'm really hoping. That that nothing's on your windshield. I thought you were going to be like, I'm really hoping there's going to be a I would love resolution, like some some like big confrontation for yeah. her to be like, no. And also, who are the kids? Yeah. You know? I would have for sure had like my guy friend stake out too oh, one night. Oh, thousand percent. In the car. So like when he walks up, just like lay on the horn and be yeah. like. Oh, me and Taryn, if that there. happened to me. For example, oh, I and I told you yeah. about it. Me and Taryn would a thousand percent drink all the Celsius, yep. stay up all night, so yep. that we could watch whatever whoever was doing it. Absolutely, and you better believe my YouTuber self would have like five camera angles recording Absolutely. the whole thing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. 
Wow. Wow. Well, I'm not going to feel safe ever again in my life, so. It sucks being a girl. It really does. There's a lot of things you just, you just, you just can't do. Like, I really, like, the whole, like, you can't even, like, you're scared to be mean, you're scared to be too nice. Yeah. I had, um, in, like, reference to your story, I worked alone at a hotel by myself so many times, like, countless times. For years, I would work the night shift, and I would work by myself with no security. Yes, there were cameras, but they, like, weren't great. Um, no, no coworker with me, like, just me. A girl yeah. at the desk by it's herself. Scary. There were so many sketchy things that happened that were like terrifying. And Ugh. there's nothing you can do. And like, what do you do when a guest comes down and he's like 6'3 and huge and is upset about his room, but I don't have another room to put him in? He's yeah. like literally looking down at me, yelling at me, and I have no one to like go yeah. to. You know, it's the worst situation. Yeah, I feel like there should always be like two people. At all yeah, times, and unfortunately, like it should be a guy and a girl. Yeah, in those stupid. situations when you're by yourself, it's not fair. And I'm very much like I can handle myself, but like I, <laughs> uh, no, to I would a degree, take yes. But yeah. then there's like you just sometimes you just need a guy there. And yeah, it's just it's a bummer. No, for, for sure, us girls. Oof. Anywho, well, I like that we ended on like a different type. I of know. Scary. Me too. Um, and all I, all your guys's ghost stories were. It was too much. It was a lot. It's too much for me. Sleep's been rough this um, last year. I hope you guys have a happy, happy Halloween. And we will be back in like a couple days, right? When they hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our regular programming. A regular scheduled programming. Yeah. Yeah, Halloween is Sunday. We'll be, uh, this is coming out Sunday. We'll be back tomorrow with a regular Ah, episode. Yep. There you go. Which, you know, we're very excited for. Thank you guys so much for um, sticking through our what is this our third October yeah third October series uh we love this we look forward to it every year yeah don't be sad it's coming back it'll come back so fast it always is like blink of the eye it's back also I said this last time but I don't think a lot of you really understood if you have a good scary story you can still send it in on a regular day yeah because I mean we love talking about yeah how we can like protect ourselves absolutely so So go ahead send it in it does not have to be part of our October series uh, to write in a scary story. We will take them. Um, and yeah, that is all. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, review, send them to all your friends. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Yes. Happy Halloween. Say a dad joke. Oh, I forgot. I'm so oh, sorry. Gosh. You should have just interrupted me. I, Once I, I start saying the I did. like, I rate, review did. earlier. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Hold on. I need a second. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> what is a vampire's favorite fruit? A blood orange. That's good, Ash. No. A nectarine. Ah, get it. That's good. Do you get it? That's really good. Yes, I get it. Thanks. Okay, guys, like, rate, review. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Share, subscribe. Happy Halloween. We love you the mostest. Bye. Bye. Bye.